Hi, I'm Susan Brackley, and we're going through the book of Proverbs. Um, I hope you've been following along as we've done quite a few verses already. We're in verse 7 of chapter 1 right now, and I'm going to go ahead and read that and get right into it because um, there's a lot of information here that we need. And we've already read who wrote the book of Proverbs, and we have already read why Proverbs was written and who it's written to and what it's written for to give us wisdom and insight, draw us closer to the Lord. And then now we're going to delve right into getting that wisdom, okay? And God is going to tell us, and he doesn't hide his wisdom on us. He wants us to have it. He wants his people to follow him and be wise. So verse 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay, so um, right off the bat, we know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, okay, or, or instruction. We need instruction and we need the fear of the Lord. And there's other verses that echo this very thing. I want to read them. We already read this one the other day in Job 28, 28. It says, and he said to man, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. And then in um, Psalms uh, 111 verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. And then I want to run to Proverbs again, because there's another proverb that says this. In Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10, Again, this is echoing the same theme throughout the Bible. Um, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. And boy, don't we need insight, and we need that wisdom that the Word of God gives us. And the point of this verse in, verse, um, in chapter 1 of Proverbs, verse 7, is very obvious. It's very blunt. It's something that he comes right out and says, that you need to have the fear of God, before you can have understanding. It's the beginning of understanding is to fear God. So the first step in gaining knowledge for you and I, or for anyone, is to have humility, okay? To put ourselves where we belong before God and to exalt Him in our hearts where He belongs, and that's a reverential fear of God and a respect for Him. Now, the reverence, to reverence God and to, is to exalt him in our hearts where he belongs, not to make up a fictitious God, which many people do. I'd say most people do. They don't look at him as he reveals himself to be in the word, which is what we're going to delve into, is we want to know what God says about himself instead of what we might make him out to be, because there's no, no use in doing that. We'll deceive ourselves, right? Um, so... Part of fearing God is to acknowledge his sovereignty, to acknowledge everything and to agree with everything that God reveals himself to be. Some people just want God of love, and God is very much a God of love, isn't he? But he's also a God that hates evil. He's a God of wrath. He's a God of um, uh, humility. He's a God of, um, well, not humility as we know it, but he is um, a God of love. He's a God of um, knowledge. He knows everything. He's sovereign. He um, is without error. He's holy, always holy, holy. He promotes humility for us, okay? He wants us to be humble. He wants us to know him and to come to him in reverence. And that's why so many people don't want to come to him is that they will not give up themselves. They will not look at themselves as nothing. And we do. We need to die to self to live unto God, don't we? So anyway, to acknowledge his, part of fearing him is to acknowledge his sovereignty and his autonomous ways. God is the only one that um, is autonomous. All right, it's a, part, a huge part of fearing him, so we need to know that about God. Now, sovereignty means that he has dominion, he has rulership, he has power, he has control, and he has authority. Well, a ruler might have authority and rulership and power, but sovereignty, when you're sovereign, you are the ruler. You are the authority. You are in control of all things, and you have power over everything and everyone. And that's God's sovereignty. And to be autonomous is to be independent, to be self-reliant, um, self-governing. Um, okay, God is 
God over all. He, he bows to no one. He gets counsel from no one. To, we need to, in fearing him, we need to agree with those things about him, and we need to understand somewhat of those things of him, don't we? So if you view God as a grandfatherly figure, which a lot of people do, is that he's just up there chuckling at his little children as we sometimes might fall and we might think something wrong. And yeah, we sinned. And a grandfather might say, well, you know, you're not going to go to McDonald's if you do that today. And then he might give in a few hours and say, well, I'm going to take them anyway. God is not a grandfatherly figure. And he's not a genie. A lot of people look at God as a genie. He's just there and he's handy if you get cancer. And he's, he's handy if you come into some trouble or if you need some help. Okay, so they like to look at him as a genie that you just rub a bottle or you pray to him only when you need to. When, when you have no other help and that's all you do with him. You don't try to have fellowship with him. You don't live for him. All you want him for is a good luck charm. And that's not true of God. That's not who he is. And some look at God as a tyrant, that he's up there and he could get me out of this trouble and he won't. And they're bitter at him. And um, he's the reason for all of this and that and the other thing. And they don't know God. Okay, so if we have a misunderstanding of God, you cannot fear him. You cannot fear God that way. It's because God is none of those examples. He's none of them. So notice the contrast here in uh, Proverbs 1, verse 7. The contrast, um, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the contrast here, and you can find a lot of contrast as you study the book of Proverbs, is reverential fear versus foolish despising. Okay, you either have a reverential fear for God, and you will learn if you do, because you give yourself to him in faith and you believe in him. And that's where fear of the Lord comes from, is believing in him and giving yourself to him. Where fools despise him. They don't need God. They don't want God. They don't, they'll do what's right in their own eyes. They don't need anybody. They look at, at Christians as dolts that go around needing a crutch. They, they need God. Well, certainly we need a crutch, don't we? We do need a crutch. We need more than a crutch. We need our creator to run our lives. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. That's how he created us to be. So anyway, um, we're not to have a slavish fear of God. That's not complete either. That's not looking at him as he is. We should have a loving reverence and, an, and a loving awe of God. Okay, so that we just love him. We absolutely love him. And it makes us not want to sin against him. It makes us want to serve him as he is. And it makes us want to learn about him and spend time with him alone. So, um, again, it gives us a desire to learn of him and to please and to serve him and to be in agreement with God, okay? We are to be in agreement with God. God is always right. I'm not always right. You're not always right. Even some godlier people than we've ever dreamed of being, they're not always right either, but God is always right. And to always, always agree with him, even when we don't totally understand, that's walking by faith. So that's the fear of God, is that we need to uh, believe in him, we need to have faith in him, and we need to agree with him, and we need to learn of him and want to be with him and love him, and agree with him to whom he reveals himself to be, not some fictitious God that we make up in our mind. Now, we as Christians should have a wholesome dread of displeasing the one that we love, right? A wholesome dread of displeasing the God that we love, Jesus Christ. We don't want to displease him. We want to honor him. The world doesn't want to honor him, but we do. Knowledge grows out of a reverential love for Jesus Christ. We believe him, though we've never seen him yet before, and we've given our lives to him. We die to self every day for him, and uh, we have faith even when we don't know what he's doing in our life. That's fearing God. So God only gives wisdom to his people, He's exclusive with it, he, he, those who come to him in faith. Um, the unconverted don't want his wisdom. And you think, well, that isn't fair. Well, they don't even want his wisdom. Let's go, well, like it says in, in Proverbs, the one that we're covering today, the last half says, fools despise wisdom and instruction. There's no, there's no hiding that. Fools don't even want God's wisdom. 
But in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14, it's quite clear there as well. It says the natural person versus the Christian supernatural person, okay, the one who's been converted, the natural person that's an unbeliever does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for they are folly or foolishness to him. He counts Christianity as foolishness. You see that. I see that. Don't you hear that from unbelievers all around you? They don't want anything to do with God. Let me read this over again. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Well, the spiritual person judges all things. That's the saved person. But he himself is judged of no one. For who has, under, who has understood the mind of the Lord or instructed him? The answer to that is no one. No one instructs God. But... We have the mind of Christ. Why do we as Christians have the mind of Christ? Are we some super duper people? No, it's because God has put it in us. His spirit lives in the believer and God has put that knowledge in us as he is going to do for you and I as we learn the book of Proverbs or any other book of the Bible that we learn. That's how he works in our lives. So Christians, again, on the other side, delight in Christ. While fools reject him and mock him and do despise him, they don't just not care for him. They despise him when it comes right down to it. They don't like him at all. But the Christian delights in Christ, and that's something we didn't conjure up. That's something the Spirit enlightened us with. We were dead in trespasses and sins. He gave us eyes to see. He gave us ears to hear. We used to be blind and um, we couldn't hear, we were deaf and we were dumb and we couldn't believe if we wanted to. God had to give us light, he had to enlighten our hearts and he had to draw us. Nobody comes to Christ on their own, right? It's God that leads us. So, again, Christians delight in Christ where fools don't. Don't forget that when we don't fear God, we will take on life ourselves. We will not walk by faith. We'll say in our hearts, I'll figure this out. I'll fix this mess. Maybe I'm sick of waiting on God and his timing. Maybe I don't believe that he's doing this for my best, the trial that I'm in. So and we sometimes walk in pride and we'll say, I'm going to take on life myself. Or I'm going to do what's right in my own eyes. And that's not a Christian attitude, is it? No. That's not what the fear of the Lord is, and it's, it's the opposite. It's a healthy distrust of self. To fear God is to have a healthy distrust of yourself and to live with a God consciousness. Not a, oh no, God's watching, I better not. Well, that is a fear that we should have. God sometimes uses those um, warnings to us that you better watch out. You know, you better not do these things because I am watching and I am, uh, I am watching. I am sovereign and I am seeing and I know everything that's going on, even in your heart and your thoughts. But yet a God consciousness that we should live in as Christians is because I am God's and I believe in him and because Jesus is holy, I want to please him no matter who's looking or if no one's ever looking. I want to please the Lord. It's a healthy distrust of self. Now let's read that in what I'm saying, that you can find it in Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. And again, these are very popular verses that we all know. Okay, 3, 5 through 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on your emotions and your humanism and what you feel. Instead, trust in the Lord with all your heart, not half-heartedly. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall uh, make straight your paths. He will make it known to you what you should do. He doesn't always put the handwriting on the wall or a blinking light in your path. But each step you take on the path of life, he will direct your path. If you shun your own understanding and acknowledge him, go to him as a, fa a father and a son. Okay? And be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. There it is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge.